Oklahoma is synonymous with tornadoes. Nestled in the heart of Tornado Alley, the state routinely faces severe weather conditions fueled by unique meteorological ingredients. Among many violent storms recorded over generations, two tornadoes affecting the El Reno area stand out. The 2011 EF5 tornado, which delivered unprecedented destruction, and the 2013 EF3 tornado, which was the widest tornado ever recorded in the world. Today we'll examine both tornadoes by comparing their characteristics, their injury and death tolls, and their unique features, while also discussing the persistent atmospheric factors that make Oklahoma so vulnerable to extreme tornadoes. Hello, and welcome to Deadliest Disasters, where we cover some of the most devastating events that happened throughout history. Oklahoma's location in the central United States places it squarely in what is known as Tornado Alley, a region especially prone to violent storms. The state's vast, open plains allow for little to no disruption of air masses, while its position right in the middle of the warm, moist air flowing from the Gulf of Mexico and the cold, dry air originating from the Rocky Mountains creates an explosive recipe for severe thunderstorms. El Reno, about 30 miles west of Oklahoma City, sits center in the state of Oklahoma. In this region, atmospheric conditions frequently align to produce rotating supercells, the thunderstorms that often spawn the most dangerous tornadoes. The meteorological setting in Oklahoma is characterized by sharp temperature contrasts and abundant moisture, which create unstable air mass conditions. When a cold front or dry line moves through, it acts as a trigger, lifting the warm, moist air. As this air ascends, it cools and condenses, releasing latent heat and further destabilizes the atmosphere. Additionally, wind shear, the change in wind speed or direction with altitude, is a crucial ingredient. Shear organizes storms into supercells with strong rotation, known as mesocyclones, that can eventually lead to tornado genesis. This combination of factors is why Oklahoma, more than many regions in the United States, experiences a high frequency of tornadoes every year. In the spring months, these factors converge with seasonal trends. As the sun heats the ground and the days lengthen, the increased surface heating further destabilizes the atmosphere. This seasonal warming, combined with favorable dynamics aloft, primes the region for tornado outbreaks. Thus, Oklahoma is hit year after year by a barrage of tornadoes, ranging from relatively weak funnels to the most violent, long-track tornadoes that can leave communities devastated. On a fateful day in 2011, one of the strongest and most destructive tornadoes in Oklahoma's history touched down near El Reno, Piedmont, and Guthrie. Rated EF5 on the Enhanced Fujita scale, this tornado was not only a meteorological anomaly due to its intensity, but also a tragic event with significant human consequences. Less than 0.1% of tornadoes that occur in the United States are rated EF5. The EF5 classification indicates wind speeds that exceed 200 miles per hour and damage so severe that even well-constructed buildings are completely obliterated. As the tornado moved through its path, it demolished structures, overturned vehicles, and left behind scenes of widespread devastation. A strong tornado like the one that hit El Reno was no surprise. The atmospheric conditions on that day were textbook for an extreme supercell thunderstorm. A potent mix of high moisture, intense surface heating, and extraordinary wind shear set the stage for tornado genesis. The mesocyclone within the supercell evolved rapidly, tightening into an extreme, compact, yet incredibly powerful vortex. Radar imagery later revealed the tornado's enormous size, with swirling debris cloud that far exceeded the dimensions typically associated with even the most intense tornadoes. The unusual breadth of the vortex, coupled with multi-vortex structure, added to its destructive potential. 
In some areas along its path, winds were estimated to be well over the threshold for even the most hardened structures to withstand. Tragically, the 2011 tornado claimed nine lives and injured 181 more. The high fatality rate can be attributed to several converging factors. First, the tornado struck a region where communities had limited access to reinforced shelters or updated building infrastructure, leaving residents vulnerable to the extreme winds. Additionally, the sheer size and speed of the tornado meant that even well-prepared individuals sometimes found it difficult to escape its path. The tornado was on the ground for 1 hour and 44 minutes with a path length of 63 miles. In many instances, the tornado's path through less densely populated rural zones did not preclude significant loss of life as the homes and structures encountered were not built to withstand such extremity. The economic impact was equally severe, with extensive damage to both residential and commercial properties necessitating a long road to recovery for the affected communities. Several unique factors set the 2011 EF5 tornado apart from more typical tornado events. One remarkable aspect was its extraordinary scale and intensity combined with multi-vortex structure. Unlike many tornadoes that remain relatively narrow, this EF5 displayed a wide area impact that challenged existing models of tornado formation. Its rapid intensification and ability to maintain extreme wind speeds over a wide path made it subject of intense study among meteorologists. 2011 was a very prolific year for tornadoes and tornado-associated fatalities with multiple destructive outbreaks. The El Reno Piedmont tornado occurred during an outbreak across Oklahoma and the Great Plains that produced multiple strong to violent tornadoes near the Oklahoma City metropolitan area, which was itself part of a tornado outbreak sequence spanning from May 21st to the 26th. The Oklahoma storms came just two days after a devastating EF5 tornado that struck Joplin, Missouri, which killed 158 people and became the costliest tornado in U.S. history. Moreover, this event prompted critical evaluations of emergency preparedness in rural communities where building codes and warning systems had not kept pace with the evolving threat posed by such supercell storms. The lessons learned from the 2011 event have since influenced improvements in meteorological forecasting and public safety planning. Two years later, in 2013, another significant tornado tore through areas near El Reno. Although rated EF3 on the enhanced Fujita scale, indicating less wind speed and damage potential compared to an EF5, the 2013 tornado still left a lasting impression on the community. Classified as an EF3, this tornado possessed sustained wind speeds ranging between 136 and 165 miles per hour, capable of inflicting severe structural damage. Despite the lower intensity rating compared to the 2011 counterpart, the 2013 tornado also resulted in a tragic loss of life and illustrated that even weaker tornadoes can be deadly. The 2013 tornado developed under conditions that were in many respects similar to those seen in previous events in the region. Oklahoma's characteristic warm, moist air and the prevailing strong wind shear combined to create a supercell thunderstorm that eventually spawned the EF3 tornado. Remaining over mostly open terrain, the tornado did not impact many structures, however measurements from mobile weather radars revealed extreme winds in excess of 313 miles per hour or 500 kilometers per hour within the vortex. These are among the highest observed wind speeds on Earth, just slightly lower than the wind speeds of the 1999 Bridge Creek Moore tornado. As it crossed US-81, it had grown to a record-breaking width of 2.6 miles, or 4.2 kilometers, beating the previous width record set in 2004 by the Hallam, Nebraska tornado. The human toll was devastating. Fatalities occurred largely because the tornado struck during a period when residents were caught off guard by the storm's intensity, or when warning systems failed to communicate effectively the imminent danger. 
the loss of life in the 2013 event underscored that the EF rating is not the sole predictor of casualty numbers. Rather, the time of day, the density of the population in the affected area, and the local building standards play critical roles. In communities where homes were older or poorly constructed, even the relatively lower intensity could lead to a catastrophic collapse, significantly increasing the risk of fatal injury. The 2013 tornado caused substantial damage to public infrastructure and left a lingering impact on the community's collective sense of security. No one could have imagined such a wide and powerful tornado to hit their town just two years after the EF5 event. Overall, eight people lost their lives that day, and over 150 people were injured. Both tornadoes will continue to be studied and will hold a place in tornado history forever. The intensity and long track of the 2011 EF5, and the sheer size and the erratic nature of the 2013 EF3 tornado caused some of the most horrifying events Oklahoma has ever witnessed. Six years later, in 2019, the El Reno area was struck again with a brief low-end EF3 tornado that spawned from an intense squall line just southeast of the city, killing two people and injuring dozens of others. The repeated onslaught of tornado events in Oklahoma, and particularly the tragedies near El Reno, has catalyzed significant changes in the way communities and meteorologists approach severe weather outlooks. One of the key takeaways is the necessity of a comprehensive understanding of the local meteorological dynamics that set the stage for tornado formation. Oklahoma's unique position in Tornado Alley serves as both a natural laboratory and a cautionary tale. The state's geographic and meteorological traits create an environment that, almost by design, produces some of the most dangerous tornadoes known to man. The experiences of El Reno and countless other communities across Oklahoma highlight an enduring truth. While scientists and engineers can improve our capacity to predict and mitigate severe weather, it's up to the individual to stay safe during times of extreme weather events. Thanks for watching today's video on this devastating but important historical event. If you found this informative, please hit that like button and subscribe for more historical deep dives. And let me know in the comments what other overlooked historical events you'd like to learn about. Until next time, this has been Deadliest Disasters.